imagine from one day to the other, 96% less ETH is produced each day. That's actually a mind blowing amount of ETH that won't be produced, won't be able to be sold to people. And with the same amount of demand, even higher demand, in my opinion, the price of ETH can just skyrocket. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the most bullish events that will be happening for the Ethereum blockchain, and that is the ETH 2.0 merge. I'll make sure to watch until the end as that's when I'll be talking about the cliffening. Now, this does sound a bit terrible, but if you're an ETH holder, this is probably one of the best things that can happen for your investment. So make sure to watch until the end. This video is sponsored by block staking, one of the best ways to earn passive income and run your own validator using a safe and simple way. John would like to start staking his 32 ETH and start benefiting from the high staking rewards. Unfortunately, running a validator is difficult and many things can go wrong. That's when he found block staking is the world's first non-custodial ETH2 staking platform. With the block staking desktop app and a simple step-by-step -step process, John can easily start running his own validator in the cloud. The important part is that he never shares his private keys in the process. If you also want to benefit from a non-custodial staking solution, then make sure to check out block staking today by clicking on the link in the description below and let your ETH generate more ETH for you. Let me start with what is actually happening with Ethereum and the high fees and what kind of solution is about to actually fix this. Well, you might not already be aware of it, but Ethereum Proof of Work is actually transitioning to Ethereum 2.0 Proof of Stake, meaning you won't need these miners with their graphic cards to mine new blocks, but you have some validators proposing and attesting for new blocks, which is a lot cheaper. Now, if you've already got a car and it's running and you've got like an ecosystem on top of it, it's very difficult to actually change the motor from one car and put it into the motor of another car while keeping both cars running. However, this is something that the Ethereum Foundation and Ethereum developers are attempting to do. They're trying to move the whole Ethereum ecosystem from proof of work, keep it running and move it into the Ethereum proof of stake. And this action of moving it is actually called the merge, the ETH 2.0 merge. The top here, you've got the Ethereum history, which are all of the transactions, all of the funds, the ERC20 tokens, NFTs, and so on that people have transacted or own um, will actually be moved onto proof of stake. So you might not already, already be aware of it, but there's actually a proof of stake blockchain that is already running in parallel to Ethereum proof of work. This is actually known as the beacon chain. That's the heart of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. And this merge should actually happen at the end of this year or possibly more likely in Q1 2022. And there are some actually very, very important fundamentals and changes to the economic aspects of ETH that would drastically change the price. But what I'd like to share with you, and this is really important, this is what is actually already running at the moment, the beacon chain, which is the heart of the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So the beacon chain is a fully independent network, which has a proof of stake consensus layer. This is really important because what that basically means is that you do not need expensive mining hardware in order to propose and vote for new blocks. You might have already used the Binance Smart Chain and you see that it's super, super cheap. The reason is because it's also on proof of stake. So this Ethereum 2.0 blockchain will be running on proof of stake. Not only that, but it's also going to introduce at some point shards and you can imagine them as islands which are very close to the beacon chain. So the beacon chain would be the main island and then you've got like many islands surrounding it and all of those will help alleviate the high transactions that are happening on the Ethereum blockchain. So you might have 
some transactions happening on one island, some transactions happening on another island. But the main point is that not all of the transactions are happening on the main island because at the moment, if your um, proof of work is basically one single island with many people transacting on it, and that's the reason why it's so clogged, the fees are so high. So to fully realize the transition to proof of stake, Ethereum's history on the proof of network will be preserved as the proof of stake consensus layer is merged in a replacement for proof of work. You, you can imagine it like having a copy of all of the transactions and everything that ever happened on Ethereum proof of work. So any kind of ESC tokens that you bought or you sold and you sent and so on will be stored in a kind of virtual copy. And this is called um, blockchain state. And this will actually be copied onto the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. So all of the new blocks will not be proof of work anymore. They will be created using proof of stake. However, you can retroactively see all of the transactions that happened previously, thanks to this copy that was made of the Ethereum proof of work blockchain. Now, when is this merge actually happening? Now, we all know with all types of development, delays can happen. So this time is not set in stone. It's possible it also happens only in Q2 2022. Um, but the non-official estimate is sometime in Q1 2022. There's actually a long answer and it's basically dependent on multiple upgrades that are happening. You've got the Berlin upgrade happening in April. You've got also the London upgrade that's happening in June, July. Then you've also got some upgrades that are happening for EVE 2.0. There's the um, Alter upgrade happening in June 2021. And this is the last upgrade happening for EVE 2.0 before this merge. So the decision has to be made if this merge is gonna happen in the Shanghai upgrade, which should be in Q1 2022. Another improvement proposal will be postponed to afterwards. What is the cliffening? Now the cliffening does sound a bit dreadful as if something is falling off a cliff. But if you actually think about what is actually falling off the cliff, it actually becomes something really positive. Now with the cliffening, what it basically means is the amount of ETH that is issued every day gets reduced by around 96% after the merge. Think about that. At the moment, around 13,500 ETH per day is issued. That's a massive amount of ETH. Now the cliffening comes from this Bitcoin phrase, the halvening, where the block rewards are halved for Bitcoin. But with the cliffening, the ETH rewards are like, like thrown off of a cliff. And to put that into perspective, at the moment, the annual issuance is about 4.3% of the total ETH supply. However, with the proof of stake issuance model, the current projections predict a drop between 0.3 to 0.4%, which is crazy. Now, you have to realize that, and this is a very, very important economical thing. If you've got some kind of asset and it becomes a lot more scarce, you've got a type of curve. And the more demand there is for this asset, and the less of the asset is available, well, the price would just skyrocket. That's it. Even if the demand remains the same, the price will go up. But with all of the utility that can be found in the DeFi ecosystem, and this utility is growing day by day with the amount of depths that are coming out and so on, the demand is just gonna go up. So you're gonna have a supply shock, less like incredibly less amount of ETH is going to be issued every day. And you're gonna have a demand shock where people are actually entering into the DeFi ecosystem like crazy. There's so much money in this ecosystem. People are throwing money left and right at different projects, new ICOs. Um, the launch pads are always maxed out with whatever project is creating a new ICO. So the amount of money is not the problem. The problem is going to be being able to buy enough ETH. And it's already something that is occurring 
where there's a supply shortage already at the moment. So if there's a supply shortage at the moment on many exchanges, people are having a bit of trouble buying massive amounts of ETH. Just imagine what's gonna happen when there's 96% less ETH that is created on a daily basis. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out Blockstacking down below and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.